This meeting is being recorded. Okay, hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is Helen Kennedy, and I am the executive director of the New Haven Schools Foundation. Uh, we're a nonprofit, uh, and we are um, located in Union City, and we provide uh, two programs primarily. We do the scholarship program, and we provide classroom grants for teachers. So uh, what I'm here to talk to you about today uh, is the scholarship program. Uh, we have, uh, we call it Pathways to Success, and a lot of people have a misconception that scholarships are really only for that student with a 4.5 GPA that got, was in all the advanced placement colleges and is going to go to, you know, an Ivy League school. So yeah, that couldn't be further from the truth. We have scholarships for um, low-income families. We have um, trade school, vocational school scholarships. Uh, we have some for students with a GPA between 2.5 and 3.5. You know, so there's some of them that are earmarked, you know, for pretty much, it, um, you know, any kind of student if you meet all the other requirements. So I would say if you're considering going to college, you have nothing to lose by submitting an application and taking a look. Uh, we have about, uh, I want to say about 200 scholarships that we gave out last year, uh, maybe 200, no, 230, I think it was, and it totaled $184,000. And all of this is money that is only for New Haven students, and it's donated by individuals and local companies, um, maybe teacher groups or uh, the Lions Club. So the scholarships are funded by other people and every single one of them has a different criteria for selecting the student who would be the recipient. So what I'm going to uh, do for most of this program is I'm going to walk you through the application and I understand we are running late, so I'm going to go quickly through it. And I believe a lot of um, a, once you're in the application, a lot of it is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the if you need me to do a Q and A one afternoon or something where you can just drop in like office hours and ask me questions, I can do that. And then Miss Ali has done you know, worked with us on the scholarship program for many years now, and she's very knowledgeable about how it works. So there will be help there for you uh, if you um, don't get everything that you need today. So let me uh, do my screen share. And give me just one second. All right. Okay, so to get started, you're going to go to nhsfoundation.awardspring.com. I this is uh, I believe it's in the email that I sent you, so you can refer back to the email if you forget. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is to create an account. So when you get to this login screen, there's a button down here at the bottom that says register. So you click there and you would enter your email address and that's a different one. Let's go. Work, okay. Okay, so the one thing I would suggest at this point when you're registering, the most important thing is use your personal email address not your school email, because if you are awarded a scholarship, uh, you're going to be interacting with the award spring system after you graduate and your email won't work anymore after you leave uh, New Haven. So use your personal email address and then you create the account. You have to agree to the privacy policy. 
And then you get to what's called your dashboard. And uh, right now, the only action item that you have is to start the application. Later on in the process, that may change where you have things that require completion. So right now, we're going to start the scholarship, uh, start the application. Uh, you can come back later on your own uh, using this uh, menu over on the left. You can take a look at all of the scholarships that are on offer, and you can see all of the donors, and that helps you to really understand uh, what the options are. And um, uh, you know, so you could. Well, let me just show you. Look at look at all the scholarships there are. I mean, it's a really really long list of scholarships just for New Haven students. So it's definitely, definitely worth, worth your time to go through this process. Okay, so back to the dashboard. I'm gonna start the application. And uh, this gives you an opportunity if you forgot and you use a new, new Haven address, it tells you how to change it, which is pretty easy. So just read the instructions. Um, we, like I said, it's a community-based scholarship program. Uh, what keeps it going is the donors, and what keeps the donors going is you, the students. So we really ask, please agree to attend the scholarship awards ceremony. Uh, and that's just an opportunity for the sponsors to meet you, and uh, you know it give, makes them feel good, and it keeps, keeps the program going. And you never know, sometimes sponsors have been known if you attend the luncheon, sometimes they will say, you know what? I want to, I really like this student. I'm going to give them an extra thousand dollars to go towards college, or maybe I'll help them out buying that laptop. So, you know, you never know. They say, if you don't, the, the key to success is showing up. <laughs> All right. So your student ID number, you know what that is. And that has to be numeric. Uh, we're going to enter a phone number. And your gender, your mobile phone is the most important, address, one, two, three, four, name, um, and it's either you select Union City or you, if you don't live in Union City, you collect, my city is not listed, and then you enter it, uh, the name of your city. Uh, the reason for that is it's just matches you to a, a certain scholarships that are where that may require the student live in Union City. So it had to be structured that way. So California is part of the address and then your zip code 94587. And uh, what is your ethnicity? I'm going to put um, that, uh, let's say I am going to say I'm Asian just for the purpose of doing this. Um, so, Academic information, uh, what high school do you attend? Uh, so obviously you go to Conley now, but you may have attended Logan up until last year or last semester. So if you attended both schools, you can select Logan as well as Conley or um, whichever other programs you may have participated in. Um, there are a couple of scholarships uh, where they give extra points for a student who attended a particular middle school. So that's the reason we're asking this question. And, you know, that's going to be a recurring theme throughout the application process. Some questions might sound arbitrary to you, or you might go, why are they asking that question? And the reason is there is a scholarship that wants to know that information. So uh, we want a, a copy of your unofficial high school transcript. And you can get this, Ms. Utley will tell you how to get it. Um, I understand it's a, available in your student portal if you guys have access to that. And then you would update a copy and it's gonna be a PDF and I'm just picking any PDF. Um, and it absolutely has to be your official transcript. And I never, it never occurred to me that there would be some confusion about this, but one student uh, submitted um, a copy of his class schedule. And that's not what we're looking for here. This is the scholarship sponsors. They look at your grades and they wanna see, you know, I know 
for some students, you didn't get straight A's the whole time. You might have had some bad semesters or bad classes now and then. But what they're really looking for is have you progressed and have you shown improvement and things like that. So it just submit the transcript and don't don't worry about what it reflects. Um, it is what it is. Now we're looking for the current weighted GPA, which is on your transcript. And you may see more than one GPA noted. So what we're asking for is the one that is called the weighted GPA. And you just enter, like I have a 3.0. And how many hours of community service? Let's say I did 50 hours. Are you a special ed student? I am not. I hope to get a bachelor's degree in college. If, um, if you would like to eventually get a master's or do some training that requires a higher, um, higher degree, you just would select the highest one. Um, but, uh, and then again, if you are going to attend a trade school or a vocational school, you would select a certificate. And that might be like, if you're going to come out of a training program and become an, a licensed electrician uh, or an auto mechanic, or even, um, uh, you know, if you want to do some uh, technical training and learn how to program, uh, that would be a certificate. So what is your enrollment status going to be? Um, I'm going to say full time. I, and then the next question is, what is your planned major? Uh, now, a lot of kids have figured out that this is a database-driven scholarship matching application. So uh, it's not going to help you if you select every option here. What we're looking for is no more than three. Um, so if you're not completely sure what you want to major in when you get to college, just check one or two or up to three that are pretty close. Like say you like writing and um, you might go into teaching someday or um, I'm also considering, uh, you know, studying science, okay? So I would select no more than three. But if science is really out of the question for you, don't, don't enter it. Just be realistic here. Uh, I'm hoping to go to a four-year college, but I might actually have to go to a community college first and then transfer. So I'm going to select for the type of school I plan to attend, I'm going to select both a two-year and a four-year college or university. So you can check both there. Uh, we're asking if you have already been accepted. That's just a... Uh, Cal State, I'm going to say Cal State East Bay. Some of the sponsors are just interested. Uh, and do I plan to attend one of the following colleges? Um, the reason we're asking this is because there are a couple of scholarships that are looking for someone going to UC uh, Berkeley or a uh, college like Stanford. Uh, but if you're not going there, just select no, I plan to attend a different school. And that's fine. And now uh, career, this is similar to the area of study question. Just select a couple. I might go into teaching or I might go into, um, I might go into business or let's say, I don't know what happened to, science there, but I'll we'll have to check on that. Okay, so now I've finished this page and I'm going to scroll back up here and you can see my, my sub menu on the size. It shows each of the different sections of the application and it tells you whether or not you've completed all the questions in a section. Okay, so I have completed the general information and the academic information now and I'm going to be moving on to the next one. Um, I think this is a good time to tell you, you have a, up until March 1st to complete your scholarship application. So 
even if it says completed, it isn't submitted uh, for review until March 2nd. So you can come back into the system and you can edit and change the answers uh, that you're entering here. You can um, make all the modifications that you want to right up uh, through the end of the day on March 1st. Okay, so I've completed this section. I go back down to the bottom and I use the yellow button to go to the next step. And that takes me into the financial information section. Um, it asks, you know, how many people in the household do I intend to apply for financial aid? And just a little tip for you. The answer to that question is always yes, because everybody needs help paying for college. Um, this is the first of some of the subjective questions. Some of our scholarships are uh, from a sponsor who wants to help a student who has a financial need. So they're looking for, you know, it looks at two things. Uh, one is income, family household income, which is down here at the bottom. And I'm going to say our family household income is 60 to 80,000. Uh, but that can still be considered financial need. Um, the most of the the settings in the scholarship are pretty um, pretty flexible there. Uh, what they really want to know is what is what is the financial need. Like you could say, um, my uh, father lost his job and my mother is disabled. You could say I have two other siblings in college and our family can't afford the expense of, addition, of an additional student. So you just very briefly, you don't have to go into uh, great detail here. They're just looking for, you know, a brief explanation of what, what is the reason for the financial hardship. And um, are you on the free or reduced price meal program? Um, Again, that's just for one scholarship, but ask that question. Okay, so now I've completed the financial information. I'm getting to the most important section of the application, and that is the student essay. And this is where you're going to be doing the most work, and you may already be, be doing some of this preparation. Uh, if you're getting ready for to apply for college or uh, to apply for other scholarships, so what I usually suggest is that you work, uh, you know, on your own on a Google Doc or a, a Word document and write your essay offline. And then when you get it perfected, you just cut and paste it into the form here, into this field um, form. Uh, you have 1,500 words and whatever, if you go over 1,500, it's just going to cut it off. So it pays to check it before you paste it in there. Uh, what the sponsors are looking for here is they want to know you. They want to get to know you. Uh, they want to know what are your goals, um, why you uh, want and need a scholarship. Uh, they want to know what you've done. Have you been involved in community service? Have you been involved in uh, after school activities? Uh, do you volunteer at your church? Um, some people like, have you, you know, created a, an app that you got loaded onto the app store, you know, whatever accomplishment you may have um, achieved is this is where you would want to write about it. You can also include difficult circumstances that you have had to overcome to get to where you are today. Uh, most kids have had, you know, some sort of a hardship. Uh, but I know when you're at Conley, you've often overcome, you know, circumstances that are, you know, really challenging. And that's an accomplishment in and of itself that you've been able to get through high school, having overcome what you have. Uh, so this is where you talk about that. Um, you know, be proud of your accomplishments and discuss them here. And also, you know, if, if you have a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a disability, if you have a, um, 
you know, a financial need, if you had to miss school because of illness, if you were especially hard hit by COVID and, you know, learning from home just didn't work well for you, you know, whatever those things are, this is the time where you can write about it. But I just want to emphasize, include both your accomplishments and your hardship, okay, for the financial need, for what you've overcome. And, uh, you know, especially jump, any extracurricular community service activities, that sort of thing. Um, Miss Ali will be helping you with your essays. So when you get them done, you know, you can, uh, you know, make an appointment or drop in. I'm not sure how, how it's working now if you have um, drop in hours, but you'll be able to get some advice on your essay. And I'm just typing in some text so that I can move on to the next. And then there's a brief essay. And what they're looking for here is what makes you unique? What, what is the one thing that makes you the most special and makes you stand out from your, um, your peers? And you could say, hey, I can sing. I can, uh, I have this talent that people don't recognize or, you know, I'm a really good speaker or I'm friendly and people really like me and, you know, whatever it is, I'm a good bowler. Whatever it is that makes you unique or different, this is just a really short answer question that gives, um, uh, gives the reviewers a, a different look at you. Okay, so now, are there any questions on the essay while I'm here? No? So real, real quick, I do want to say that um, I work, that's the biggest part of um, the workshops that I will be having throughout the month of February is on your scholarship essay because that takes the most time. Um, but I work very closely with you guys, make sure that everything looks good, make sure that everything that um, Helen has been talking about is included in your scholarship. Um, so just to let you know that that's a big part of it, but we, you know, you guys aren't doing it alone. I'm there with you pretty much every step of the way until you hit submit. <laughs> so. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the next set, section. Come on, next step. Okay, these are your recommendation letters. So students are required to have one letter of recommendation. So I would suggest that you get in there like today or tomorrow, uh, start your application. You don't have to complete it all today, but just go straight to the recommendation letters and ask for two or three letters of recommendation. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is you only need one, uh, but I have been hearing that uh, your teachers at school are, have, are they are all struggling with uh, increased workloads uh, and you know changes to the way that they work because of the situation with COVID. And uh, you're, your first choice to a, for a letter, that teacher may not get to it. They may not have enough time to do it. So the one thing doing it, requesting the letters now, it gives these people the most, the, the longest amount of time to get that letter into the system. Uh, but it also gives you an opportunity to ask for more than one person. All you need for most of the scholarships in the system, all you need is for one letter to be returned. Okay, it helps if you reach out to a particular teacher personally and let them know, I'd like to ask you to write me a letter of recommendation. Um, uh, would you be willing to do that for me? Uh, if, they, if you do that, they, they watch for it because these requests come via email and a lot of times, you know, people, uh, you know how it is when your mailbox is full of spam, you might overlook it. But if they know that you are going to be asking them, they'll be walk, watching for it. Uh, it also helps if you just um, tell them if you're looking, if you want someone specifically to write about community service or if you want them to um, 
talk about that project that you completed that had um, that you did really well on. You know, if there's something specific you want them to write about, just ask them. Uh, the way these forms work is uh, you're going to suggest, I'm going to send this to Miss Utley and her email. Okay, so that's really all you have to have to do. The minimum is you enter the name and the email address. And there is a letter already written that gets sent out to this person, uh, but you can customize this. If you wanna say something special, uh, if you wanna say, remember me, I was in your math class uh, last year or something, you know, you can, you can edit it to say whatever it is that you like. And then um, I, the letters have to be submitted by March 1st. So the deadline for teachers is the same date as your deadline. Okay, so March 1st. So we'll send that request. Now it's February 2nd. So Miss Utley has almost a full month to get that, that letter sent and submitted. So what happens next is she will go to her email and she will see a letter a request for a recommendation letter. She clicks on the email and then she, write, she writes the letter of a, uh, recommendation. And then when it gets submitted, it becomes part of your application. So you don't actually see all the letters, uh, but you, may, you will be able to tell when it has been submitted. So you can see right here where it says that you requested the letter and the status is pending. Uh, so when the letter has been received, you'll see the status changes to complete it. Okay. Uh, I recommend that you come back in here and, and check this periodically over the course of the month. Because if you're, say Miss Utley forgets about this, so it's like, oh, there's one week left to go before the deadline and you don't have your letter in there. You can come back in and you can click this button to resend it to Miss Utley and she'll get a reminder in her email, but you have to trigger this. Um, and the other thing is, let's say she tells you, I'm sorry, um, I, I'm out of time. I'm not gonna be able to get to writing your letter then then you can click this button that says send a new request and you can you can send it to a different person to ask for the letter. So, but this is something that you need to monitor over the course of the month, just to make sure your recommendation letters come in. Um, the other two forms on the page are exactly the same. They're just additional modules. So you can ask for up to three letters um, here and uh, like I said, only one has to be returned to qualify you for most applications. And so uh, in order to move to the next section, you have to say, yes, you've requested a letter and then you click. Okay, so uh, were there any questions on uh, re recommendation letters? Nope, okay. So let me move into quick qualify. This is a lot of random questions about your activities and your, uh, you know, programs. It's just a lot of random stuff. And uh, this is like a catch-all for all of the um, scholarships that have special requirements of a uh, student. So one is characteristics and you can select as many as apply. Like I have a strong record of leadership. Um, uh, I was an English learner, so English was not my first language. I have a disability. I have a parent who graduated from Logan. Um, I have an excellent attendance record. Uh, I'm interested in history. Okay, so they seem random. They're not related to each other. You just select whichever ones are true. Um, have you ever, have you or a loved one faced a debilitating illness? that affected your academic endeavors. Um, if you say yes, you will get a short answer and this is another opportunity to just explain the circumstances, 
Okay, so I'm going to type that in. Are you the first in your family to attend college or university? I'm going to say yes. Then uh, school programs. Uh, these are, there are scholarships for students who participated in some of these specific programs. So if you were um, in the migrant education program, you would select it. If you were in the ICL, you would select that. If not, you don't select anything, it's fine. Uh, have you contributed in a positive way to your family or community? And um, if you say yes, or if you say not sure, uh, you'll be asked to submit another short essay of talking about how you made an impact. This question was added to the scholarship uh, application last year uh, because of COVID. And uh, we have a lot of scholarships that where the, the sponsors are really looking for uh, students who have performed community service. But with COVID, it's been really hard. And a lot of kids just haven't been able to volunteer as much as they might have in the past. So have you helped your family or your community? Uh, maybe you uh, helped your younger siblings with their homeschooling. Maybe um, you uh, tutored other kids. Maybe you uh, did more work around the house because um, your parents weren't going to work. So this can be any type of service that you did that's above and beyond what you would normally do uh, that made an impact on somebody's life, okay? So are you currently employed? If you say yes, you'll be asked some questions about employment. Um, there are no scholarships that require you to work, uh, but there are a couple where they are, they just want to know. Um, uh, they're, they're looking for people who have that um, entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, so if you did do work, complete those. Have you ever held a job? Yes. Okay. Now, have you experienced family, academic, financial, emotional hardship in your life? If you say yes, there's another short answer. And um, if you say uh, no, you can zip past that. And this might be someone else in your family was sick. It could be um, you suffered from... Uh, depression because you were confined to the house for so long during COVID. Uh, it could be, you know, it could be any anything that you have dealt with that was challenging. Um, so ag again, you describe it. We're asking the questions in different ways. We have scholarships that are looking for financial only. There are a couple that are looking for someone who's had an economic or emotional challenge. You know, so it seems like you're being asked the same question multiple times, but we are not, sorry. Um, okay, the next one is activities. So let's say you participated in athletics, you select athletics, and then it wants to know what sport. I'm gonna say track and field. Um, but, you know, like if it's track and field and baseball, I can say baseball and track and field. If I also participated in music, I could say I was in the band. And guess what? I was in um, a club at school. And um, let's say I belonged to the Leo Club. Uh, so whatever you did, just check them off. And uh, if you, did I take the next one? Did you take at least one AP honors class in the same quarter as playing on a sports team? I did not, but some people have, and you know, there's a scholar athlete scholarship looking for that person. Okay, so now I am at the end, like, like a, a, just a roundup on this particular page of the application. Select everything that applies to you. You know, you know, when there are multiple options, read through them all and check everything that matters. And all that information is used for is to match you to particular scholarships. So now I'm at the end and I don't have a next step button anymore. It says submit application. So I'm gonna select submit application. 
And what happens now is it's gone through and it crunched all my answers and it matched me to available scholarships. Uh, the scholarships that are on my dashboard are the ones that have additional um, follow-up questions. Um, and the, uh, let's say, let's look at the Lions Club. Okay, and I'm picking the Lions Club because they have a scholarship. It's a $1,000 scholarship that is earmarked for a student who attends either Conley or the Independent Study High School. And um, so if you see this, you're, you're going to get a, a, a follow-up page. So the first thing is it, it does is it tells you all about the scholarship and what they're looking for. So this particular one is they're looking for a letter of recommendation for a member of the community who is not a teacher at your school. So uh, maybe you volunteered at church or uh, you were an assistant coach on the soccer field or, um, or what, whatever that is. They're looking for somebody that you worked with outside of school who will write that letter of recommendation. So um, in that case, you're gonna do a couple of things. You're gonna uh, complete this follow-up essay that it's asking, but you also wanna go back to your recommendation letters and make sure that you have asked a community member for a letter. Okay, so this tells you what you, what you need to do. And then down here, they're asking for a short essay for how you provided service to your community. And so you would type up to 500 words describing that. And there is a note, this is new this year, Miss Utley, <laughs> uh, since your kids, probably one of your students that's going to win this. The Lions Club is no longer going to be reviewing the main essay. They are only interested in your community service activity. So this one is the only one they will see. So you want to make sure that even if you're repeating information that was in your main essay, that you talk about your uh, community service activities in great detail. Okay. And then uh, in order for this to be completed, you have to say, that you received a letter from someone in the community outside the school. So because of that, you know, like you might be writing this essay before that letter comes in. So save a copy of your little community service essay in case you have to come back later to paste it in. Okay, so that once you've met this, you're gonna submit the application and it takes you back to the dashboard and you can see that you have eight additional items requiring uh, additional information. So those um, follow-up questions like this one, the Remigio Bianca floor, they want a short explanation about your immigrant experience, uh, including but not limited to your age upon arrival, any challenges you faced and how you overcame them. So if the sponsor is looking for something very specific, it will ask you here. And if it just doesn't apply to you, you just move on, move on to the next one. Um, the, you know, I'm not going to go through all of, all of these because I know we're running out, we're almost at the end of the time. So let me just move on to a couple of other things. So when you click on the scholarships tab here, You'll see a list of the scholarships and it will, if you, if you qualified for it, your status will say apply. So um, like the Al Rodriguez Memorial Scholarship, for example. So now I applied for that. There were no additional requirements. So I'm in the queue to be considered for that scholarship. Um, I, um, Angela Moore Webb, I mean, the, Candice Laflamme Leadership Scholarship, Craig Harper Memorial, um, the Desraj Singh Man Memorial. So I will see, you know, there's some that I don't qualify, and I also will see a yellow button if there's a follow-up question. So 
Applied means you've completed everything that's required. A yellow button means you have follow-up information to complete. And not qualified means you just didn't meet the minimum requirements for that particular scholarship. Okay, so as, as you can see, I'm eligible for a few others if I want to put in the work. Um, the Yvonne Givens Scholarship, I'm pointing this out because this is going to go to a student uh, who is a graduate of Conley Carabello High School. Um, this, the, the donor for this scholarship, he has been known to give a scholarship to every student who applies. So your chances of going through this process, your chances of getting at least $1,000 for college are excellent just because of this one scholarship. So let's, coming back here, let's look at this one, like the Craig Harper Science Scholarship. I'm already qualified for this scholarship and I have completed all of the requirements, but I come back and I look at this scholarship and it says, the scholarship is honor, offered in honor of Coach Craig Harper, who taught science and he coached girls basketball at James Logan. Okay, so we know that he was a basketball coach. So let's say you completed your application, but you didn't check off the box for basketball. Now, if you did play basketball at any point in your career, at this point you would go back and you would check that box. It shows you played basketball uh, in the quick qualify section. And when they review your application, they will see that on your application and it's important to them. Basketball is important to the sponsor. So you will just strengthen, um, strengthen your application by adding that additional information that you might have forgotten. Um, notice something else. It shows that you applied and it shows that you qualified, even though at this point in time, your letters of recommendation have not yet been received. So, you still have to come in and you still have to check. You have to go to the dashboard and return to your application, check your recommendation letters and monitor it to make sure that that letter actually comes in. Because uh, at the end of the application period, um, the students who don't have letters, they may automatically be disqualified for a scholarship. So just because, you know, you see on your dashboard that you've applied for scholarships, I don't want you to forget about that, uh, those recommendation letters, come back in and check on those. And like I'm in here in the application again, uh, if I want to edit my essay, you can come back in, you can change it or edit it anytime up until the uh, 1st of March. And um, I would suggest you go ahead and submit the application now. Don't wait till the end to submit it because you can start working on your additional items that have to be completed the sooner you get that submission in. And you can, like I said, you can still beef up your scholarship. You can still, or your scholarship essay, you know, you can still improve every, you know, things like that. Uh, this scholarship, the Environmental Studies Scholarship, uh, is uh, Republic Services. They want to know why have you chosen? Why do you want to study environmental studies? And in this case, you know what well, you you want to think about the sponsor, Republic Services. Do you guys know who Republic Services is? They're your garbage company. They're the ones who pick up your trash and take it to the landfill and they do your recycling and things like that. So this is the reason they are asking for a student with an interest in environmental studies is because they handle all the solid waste on the, 
you know, and the planet kind of, kind of thing. So they're looking for someone who has respect for the planet and, uh, you know, the effects of uh, improper, you know, hazardous waste disposal and things like that. So knowing that they're your trash company, that helps you to write this essay um, where, where you're going to speak to what interests them. The, um, the Emma Blanco Relay for Life Scholarship. Uh, this particular one, uh, the Relay for Life is, you know, for the American Cancer Society. It's a fundraiser for uh, cancer treatment and awareness. So it's already looking for a student who has been touched by illness or cancer and has a good GPA. But the people who are offering the scholarship are the volunteers, the ones who put on the Relay for Life. So they're also looking for a person who's interested in community service. So like, say you ever walked in the Relay for Life or you did a the HERS breast cancer walk or you did something like that. This would be a great time to talk about activities like that that are similar to the relay. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the dashboard and uh, I'm going to shut up now and see, do you have any questions for me? No, no questions at all. Okay, then. We do have a question, Helen. We do, um, okay. When, when filling out the portion where are asked what your family income is, in my situation, I haven't lived at home since 16. What would I put there? Your own personal earnings. Okay. That answers my question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, Anybody put that else? there. If you are your own household, that's what you would put. If you're financially dependent on someone else, then you would include their income. And also, you know, like let's say you have a family income of $80,000, but you have eight people living in your house. When they look at that number and divide it by the number of people who are being supported by that income, they take that into consideration as well. well Any other so questions? Go ahead, Martha. No, I was just saying thank you so much. Oh, you're and welcome. You. And I'm, uh, re I recorded this, so the video will be, um, I'll be publishing it. And like I, uh, I'll, I'll share the link with you. I communicate with you by email. So watch for my emails over the course of the month. Um, and I will let you know, like if students have uh, reported a, technical issue or anything like that, or if there are any questions that come up, I share those answers with all the students. So when I send you an email, just look out for that. And then uh, that will come to your school email address uh, until March 1st. And then after that, I will only be mailing to the addresses, uh, you know, for the students who apply for scholarships. So for those of you who don't go for it, my, my spamming will stop at the end of the month. <laughs> Okay, thanks everyone. Good luck to you. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, don't don't take